Rossi Bites. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to just be doing a quick demonstration of a new Git project, which is called GPT Engineer. And this basically takes from what we know Auto GPT used to be able to do, but there were a lot of issues with Auto GPT. It would just loop itself constantly and basically never end. GPT Engineer is very much geared towards coding and it's <clears throat> supposed to emulate if you are actually talking with or dealing with a human developer. And what's really cool about it is that it actually will ask clarifying questions before it actually starts to write code. But the really cool part is that not only will it write code like ChatGPT can, but it doesn't drop off and not do all the code. And it actually puts it into files on your system locally that you can then execute and see your application running. So I'm going to walk you through a quick demonstration of how this all works. And in a separate video, I'll walk through the process of getting this all set up and installed and running on your system. So once you have GPT Engineer installed on your system, you're going to open up the folder that GPT Engineer is in within VS Code in my case here. And then what you're going to do is in there, you're going to find a folder called projects. And so if you open up the projects folder, you're going to see a file here called main underscore prompt. If you click on main underscore prompt, you're going to see the prompt that exists in this file. And this is the prompt that you're issuing to GPT engineer. <clears throat> Now, by default, this comes with a prompt that is telling it to basically create the game Snake. But I've already put a sample one in here. Write code for a website that contains a single button. When the button is clicked, I want the background of the page to change colors. So it's a fairly simple request, but I'm not specifying a language, for example, and I'm not telling it how it's supposed to do what it's supposed to do. So I'm going to go ahead out to a terminal. And from the terminal, I'm going to type in GPT hyphen engineer space, and then the projects folder forward slash example. And I'm going to hit enter. And you'll see that it's going to start out by asking some clarifying questions. For example, number one, what programming language should be used for the website? Number two, should the color change be random or predetermined? Number three, should the color change be permanent or temporary? Number four, should the button have any text or just be a plain button? Number five, should the color change be gradual or immediate? So I can answer these questions in line here just with text, or I can tell it C to move on. So for now, I'm just going to say C and it's going to go ahead and you'll see that it's going to define what files it's going to use. So we have an index.html, a style.css and a script.js. And we'll see that it's starting to write the code for the HTML, the CSS, and the script.js. And then at the end, it gives us instructions on how we would actually launch this application that we've just developed. So if we come into VS Code and go back to our projects example folder, we're going to see two directories that were created, memory and workspace. If we open up Workspace, for example, we're going to see that there is an index.html file that was created. There's a script.js, and then there's a style.css. If we look at the index.html, we can see that it's a very simple HTML file that is going to have our button, and it's going to execute a JavaScript. If we go and look at the styling for that, we'll see that we're basically assigning a style to the body, as well as to the button itself. And then the script.js file is going to handle changing of the background color when the button is clicked. So all three of those components were just created by GPT engineer using the open AI APIs in the background. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our folder where these files exist. And we're just going to double click on index.html to see if it works. Okay, so right off the bat, I can tell that there's CSS associated with this button because it's got a color to it and it's got a font styling to it. So I'm going to go ahead and click the button. And if I click it and the background changes color, then GPT engineer has successfully created this application. And there we go. We have green, I'll click again. 
we have yellow I'll click again we have red so successful test number one next test I'm going to do is going to be a little bit more complicated of a web page like this and I'm going to introduce some additional elements that I'm going to have displayed on the page okay so I've basically gone in and I'm going to delete the folders that it created under that projects example so now there's nothing there and I'm going to go back into my main prompt file and I'm going to paste in a more complicated prompt now as anybody that has used chat GPT knows good prompts will get you better outcomes the more details you can provide the better imagine you're talking to an actual software developer you want to give them as many details as you possibly can to help them start on the journey of creating your application so here I'm saying write code for a website using HTML CSS and JavaScript that contains a single button when the button is clicked I want the background of the page to change color and I want a random image from picksum.photos to be displayed on a separate line under the button the random image should change with every click of the button additionally I'd like a random inspiration quote to be displayed highlighted in black with a yellow text color under the random picture please center all content and make sure to keep the button above the image and the quote so that's a very specific prompt so we're going to go ahead and save this and then we're going to go run the GPT engineer command again okay so I'm going to come back out to my terminal and I'm going to run the GPT engineer space projects forward slash example and hit enter and we'll see again we're going to get some clarifying questions what should the text on the button be should the background color change to a specific color or a random color should the image and quote be displayed side by side or one after the other should the quote be randomly generated or should it be fetched from an API so I'm going to just say one of these here the image should be on its own line with the quote underneath it on its own line what should be the text on the button I'll just say generate quote and then nothing more to clarify okay perfect so then you're going to see that it's going to define some core classes functions and methods it's starting to write out the index.html it looks like it's including the CSS in the HTML and then it's creating the script.js file for the JavaScript itself and it looks like it's creating an array that has a series of quotes in it so then it's basically telling us the same kind of thing to run this you're going to open the index.html file and it asks us if we wanted to execute it for us so like we did before we're just going to go in and quickly take a look at what it generated and then we'll open it and take a look and see if it actually works okay so if we come back in and look in our projects folder we're going to see that we have a workspace folder again we have our index.html file and we see the styling that it put in there and we'll see that it is calling to the script.js if we take a look at the script.js we can see that this is where it's handling all of the logic of the website and it looks like we have an array here of quotes that it has pulled now again these quotes are being pulled using the OpenAI API that GPT uses and it's just pulling them in and putting them into the file for us as the quotes that it's going to use so next what we're going to do is just take a quick look at whether this actually works the way that we asked for it to work or not okay so we're going to come back over to our folder here go in and open up the index.html and we're going to see random image and quote generator and it looks like right now this is where the image would be and it's empty and then down here is the black highlight and it should have yellow text in it when we generate our first quote so let's see if this works pulled in an image and our greatest weakness lies in giving up the most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time so let's click generate quote to try it one more time 
and it's pulling in a completely random image. The best way to predict the future is to create it. So then we'll click on generate quote again. We have another random image. Believe in yourself and all that you are. Know that there is something inside of you that is greater than any obstacle. So as we can see though, it, it, it literally is creating this based on us just giving it a simple prompt with details of what we're looking for in an application. Where it excels compared to where ChatGPT kind of falls off is the ability that it can understand what you're asking for, give you the code that is needed to create what you're trying to create, and it creates the files for you on your system and asks you if you want it to execute the code for you. So this is pretty cool in my opinion, and I'm going to try it out on slightly more complex projects and I'll try to record those if they actually prove to work out well. This does seem to be like one of the top trending GitHub repos right now. And it seems like people are making iterations to it on a regular basis. So I only expect it to get better than what it is right now. Rossi Bites.